All right, did you get a tax refund this year? Are you going to get one this year before you impulsively spend it? We have some ways to put that money to good use. Financial planner Michael Neuenschwander from Outlook Wealth Advisors is here. He's going to help us think differently about the tax refund. I mean, it is our money, Michael. We've got to get that straight right off the bat. Most a lot definitely. of it's like, oh, this is a bonus. It's free. Wait, this is your money that they took throughout the year that you're getting back yeah. now. And you gave it to them with no interest along right. the way. So. Yeah, how nice are we? No interest <laughs> loans to the government. Are yeah. we good or are we good? Okay, uh, Michael, thanks for being here today. We've got four things we're going to go over on ways to use uh, this tax refund, assuming you're like the average person who's getting the average refund, which is about $3,000. About $3,000. Okay, yeah. so let's go through some of these uh, ways to improve our finances with our own money because we're getting the <laughs> loan back from the government. First one you say is to pay off high interest debt. Why is that so important? Yeah, well, like you said, I mean, there's no shortage of people want, or places wanting you to spend the money, but average credit card rate, because interest rates are so high, is around 20%. So before you just go spend the money, you know, the reality is if you've got debt, you know, credit card, whether it's a still a student loan or even an automobile at eight, nine, 10%, You'll do yourself a huge favor to knock that out first, and frankly, you'll get yourself more money in the long run yeah. when you don't have that giant monthly payment at 20% you know, stacking up against you. It's crazy how much the, the interest payments will really come out of our cash flow, yeah, right? No, that's, uh, when we look at the big picture, I mean, that's one of the things we're telling our clients when we say, how's the economy doing or where's it going to go? Well, if people don't have money to spend, that doesn't bode real well for, for the future economy picture there right. either. So paying off that debt's a big one. So we can really get ahead of some loans if, we're, if we make wise use of our tax return. Uh, your next suggestion, uh, let's pretend now we've got the high interest debt paid down or yep. paid off. We want to build our emergency fund. Why is that so important? Well, again, it says, unfortunately, you know, that same sort of average American scenario says, People, if they had a $1,000 unexpected bill, you know, auto repair, home repair, a lot of people can't, don't even have enough in savings to cover that. Right. They'd have to put it, again, right back to the credit card or go in debt to do it. And so we generally recommend people try to have three to six months of emergency money set up. So whether you unexpectedly lose a job or whether it's a health issue and you can't work, but again, that emergency fund keeps you from having to go right to the credit card or get in debt just to be able to get by for a couple of months. Yeah, I mean, it's nice when you have it if you need it, but ideally you don't want to. When you say the three to six month, if we're going to set that goal, mm -hmm. are we looking at total expenses? Am I looking at whatever my, my gross, either salary or hourly wages? Am I looking at just the expenses? Do we, what's that specific number we should look at? Yeah, so, so unfortunately a lot of people focus on, well, here's what I make, but that's not the most important number. The number is, what do you actually spend? And okay. you can even look farther and say, what do I have to spend? versus what's the nice stuff like my Starbucks and going out to eat and that <laughs> stuff and and the goal for that three to six months is let's focus on the stuff if you were really in a bind what is it you have to pay? Yeah, if you lost your job yep. or if some medical issue came up, right? And, and even farther, I mean, some people are a little different, meaning we work with people that are retired, but also people that aren't retired, sort of planning for it. Yeah. Well, if, if your income is coming from a pension, coming from Social Security, areas where you really don't have to worry about that money stopping, then you can probably get by with a little less of an emergency fund. But if you're in an industry like oil and gas, you know, that is cyclical and sometimes goes through layoffs, you probably want a little bit bigger emergency fund in that case. Yeah, very good point. Everybody's so different. Um, uh, and the, the third thing on our list is to cross things off the list. <laughs> yeah. So what would, what would a to-do list look like where it'd say, hey, this is important enough that we should use the tax refund for it? Well, and here's where you can say maybe you begin to get to have a little fun. You know, if, okay. you, if you've had some things on, on the house that needed to be repaired, or we were looking to upgrade things a little here and there, which says it's okay to go ahead and spend that money, particularly in areas where you may say, well, we may actually see some of it back. Like, certain home improvements, not all, but it says yeah. you retain that value, or if it's upgrading appliances where they're more energy efficient, so it saves you some money in the long run in that area too. Okay. And in fact, some of those uh, upgrades may actually get you a, 
another tax refund for this next year as well. Yes, yeah, so you got to be careful. I mean, I, there are definitely incentives for various things, whether it's solar or some of these other yep. upgrades. Yep. Solar, more efficient AC units, which we can all appreciate. Yeah, windows, here. right? Yeah. Things like that. You yeah. just got to check, obviously, with someone like you, who's also a CPA, to make sure that what we're spending the money on, we will get some of yep. it back, if that's the intention. Correct. Because sometimes we just want new blinds yeah. or whatever uh, the heck that it is. doesn't count. All right, let's go to number four here. We've paid off some debt. Hopefully, we're building a fund now. Maybe we've made some home improvements we want. Planning for the future. Because, hey, man, we never know. <laughs> well, here's where things can actually get exciting. Okay. Or at least from a CPA and, and, and a financial advisor, exciting. So uh, as we kind of touched on, I mean, that money is your money to begin with. You know, you just gave it to the government. Now they're giving it back to you. If you're consistently getting refunds, you may turn around and look and say, let me drop my withholding in the first place so I actually get that money every month instead of giving it to the, to the government. And if you're in the ability when it says, let me actually put some of that into my 401k. I can bump that up for future savings. Mm -hmm. Or you can do what's called a Roth IRA, which is, which is actually really nice, where it's you put the money in and it's tax-free for the rest of your life. So here's a quick little lesson. If somebody's getting, let's say they're getting 1200 bucks back. Rather than just spending that 1200 bucks, they could use that money to move $10,000 with no extra taxes from their IRA to a Roth and now that 10,000 grows tax free for the rest of their life, their spouse's life, and under current tax law at least, 10 years for the kids too. No kidding. So. And, and the key point is current tax law. Things are always changing, yeah. so folks need to check in with their CPA uh, along the way to make sure they're still making the right decisions. Yeah, because we know the current law we're all benefiting from right now expires in two years. So again, this is an opportunity for a lot of people. If you're thinking and planning ahead, there's some pretty smart financial and tax moves you should be getting with your advisor you know, on certainly over the next couple of years here. It's the time to do it. All right, Michael Neuenschwander, Certified Financial Planner with Outlook Wealth Advisors. Good to see you again, Michael. Thanks Thank for you. coming in today. You too. Really appreciate it.